My question goes to His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu. Your Excellency, in the seven years that you ruled uh, Zambia, your party accrued huge debts, and with current information from the ruling party, the current economic mess is as a result of the huge debt. Given a chance, had you continued to rule Zambia, how differently were you going to effectively deal with the current debt? What is the current government failing to do as far as the debt restructuring is concerned? Thank you so much. I, I, I thought we had restricted ourselves to... No, I, I, I heard that was mentioned in the, in the statement. That is why I asked. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I heard my name mentioned, but the context, the context in which it was mentioned it does not seem to dovetail into what we are discussing. But let me tell you that uh, this technique of referring to the past won't take us anywhere. We gave up power in 2021, and the new government is in place, and we look at what the new government is doing. And because they are failing, lamentably, that's why we are here. So, had we been in power, would have asked me that question. Because a certain guy came, or President H.H. came, to fix it. <laughs> he came to fix it, and he's not fixing it, and that's why we are worried. So, if we were in charge, then he would have asked me that question. But that question is conjecture, speculation, and so on. I'm not in charge. None of his colleagues is in charge. The man in charge is in State House, and you go and ask him what has gone wrong with the debt restructuring and all those things. We are saying, we are saying, on behalf of the silent Zambians, we are fed up. And we are saying, guys, let's think through this and find a solution. If you care to listen to what I said on 20th October when I was remembering my president, Mr. Sata, I say the democracy has diminished. The democratic space is diminishing. PF is in ruins. And I need to come back to PF and help get back PF on his feet. And my carry on call was, guys, let's work together. That's why we are here. So we are here to work at the economy, the democracy, and all those things which Zambians are complaining about. And if you read through the statement, we are saying, let's come together, put our heads together. All of us as Zambians, in a movement, kind of, we are civil society, labor leaders, clergymen, traditional leaders, politicians, come together and uh, brainstorm and say, this is where we want to go, and this is how we will go. I would like to believe that from this position where we are, the politicians will think together, come together, and have a people's alliance, and take on the one-man dictatorship we are seeing in the European Union. Thank you very much. This, this gentleman is still interested in whether I'm standing there. <laughs> and, and I hope you will find sleep, because there are many who are sleepless about that question. But let me answer it. You see, the will of the party, the people, should be reflected. And that's why we are fighting for democracy. And I cannot impose myself on the people. But if the people impose me on the ballot paper, who am I to say no? That's how it works. I am in PF, and I came back in PF to make sure that there is order in PF, there is democracy in PF. And I promise that the PF will be put on the rails again, and that's what I'm doing. And I hope that as we go, probably we'll find a leader in PF. And if people say, continue, who can Kanyapu? I'm just a servant. But if they say, no, step down, I think let's go for the conference and choose a new leader, I'll go. And I'll support one of them. Whoever we made, we made. But what I said was that uh, Zambia is bigger than PF. Zambia is bigger than Edgar Lungu. And in my cry on 28th of October 2023, I said the all political parties in opposition, I even singled out names. I said, let's work together. And this is where we are now. We are back on the drawing board. And the, and the drawing board is going to start from today going on. We've had meetings with colleagues who are in the opposition, Orebo Haikalawa, uh, Madam Kateka, and a few other people. But lately we had a meeting which brought all of us together and we said, let's go out there. And you're worried about the absence of some of our colleagues, they are coming. If there are issues, we'll resolve them, we'll discuss. Exactly. So don't worry about names. It's not about names. Any one of us can imagine a leader and we'll give him the support. Yes. And that's exactly what it will be. 
This is just a movement of like minds. Labor leaders, I said. Church leaders, traditional leaders, healers, and all those people. <laughs> Let's come together. Yeah? Unions, students, and to everyone. Let's talk about the suffering of the Zambian people. And once we talk about that, we will begin now crystallizing into our various political parties. And then from there, we'll say, how do we form an alliance? So from this people's movement, who we'll have a people's alliance, which will scheme how it will contest in the election in 2026. Whether it's like he, we have seen examples from Kenya, whether it's like we saw in Zambia, we had the UPND alliance, so we will come out with that. And from there, a the leader will emerge and we will put him on the ballot paper. So don't worry about it, Galung, he's just an individual boy. <laughs> Uh, Transparency International Zambia yesterday launched the uh, 2023 Corruption Perception Index that showed Zambia uh, having improved on its score. Uh, and, and government says that the reason for why you know we've improved on the corruption fight is because of some of the interventions that government has put up. One of them is the formation of the uh, Economic Financial Crimes Court. I'd like to find out what your thoughts are on the fight against corruption. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate his excellence and all the excellence is here. The future of the Zambian people. I'm Joseph I'm Joseph Chico from the Gasu The future of the Zambian people. Let us not beat about the bush. All you are the politicians here. The future of the Zambian people lies in your hands. You are the leaders of this country. One person cannot scare you. The, the, the movement to pay is to talk about our Zambian people, why do you want the chance to come living in poverty and the future lies in you people here. So my advice, remember to know where we are Kabundi, Jesse Omutwe, in Pagosha Banabebe. All of you people you are educated, you have got the love of the people, but there must be only one person to challenge the kind of children. By doing that, you are going to fight corruption. By doing that, we are going to fight poverty in this country. Zambian people are looking up to you. Let us not beat about the bush. The future of the Zambian people rise directly to two houses in your offices wherever you are coming from. Can you, yeah, can you be soldiers of this country to defend democracy, to come together, to speak like politicians? Yeah. I, 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 you know, I know that when UPND was in the opposition, their president, Mr. Haga in the Hijilema, used to say that Lungu are traveling too much. There's a post where he said that he, we should be consulting UPND on how to travel Corilla. And he's doing rounds now. And what happened is that when UPND came into power, they trashed everything that we did, everything that was in existence, including government employees who were in charge of the fight against Corilla. And they brought their own team. So they know better how to fight cholera. So our program was fixed when the guys took over power. So you cannot ask me what we should be doing now in the fight against cholera when if the civil service has got documents of how we fought cholera and how we brought it under control, how we intended to eliminate it by 2025, and so on. So I think uh, let's avoid this idea of uh, trying to compare our regime with what is on the table now. Yeah. What we have is... Uh, a dictatorial government of a one-man dictator where no one says a word and the man gets out with everything including the judiciary, the legislature, ECZ and everyone. So we are alive as what is going on. We have volunteered, if you don't know. Some of our ministers who served the like the Chalchiluki and others who are experts in this area of uh, fight against cholera, they've been told, no, just keep away. This is politicizing the fight against cholera. So we are telling you that, please, let bygones be bygones. We in PF, we're not the best, but we are far much better, head and shoulder above these guys. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a fact. That's a fact. And we are saying, let's work together. All of you in the opposition, all stakeholder groups, let's come together. They much talked about people's movement, which is going to give birth to the People's Alliance as a political entity. He's born today. Let's put our heads together, the academia, the labor leaders, the chiefs, like I've already let's all put our heads together. Because I have interacted with the people who helped European come into government. And a lot of them have told me, it's not 
not what we agreed upon. I won't mention names, but they've all come. They're part of us here. They're telling us, no, no, no. Please, we want to they're the ones telling us. The people who supported H8 and UPN, they are the ones in the forefront telling us that let's get rid of this man. Can we go for an early election? It's you Zambians who tell us now that this movement should be crying for an early election if need be, because it's within your constitutional right to demand for an early election. Yes. So that's why we are coming to you as a political party. But we ask you. In, 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 in the light, in the light of what we are seeing as Zambians, in the light of what we are experiencing as Zambians, was this man going and his European to continue up to 2026, or can we put pressure on him to get him to accept that an early election is imperative in the country? Dr. Kaunda gave up power in 1991. He was to run for three more years. He himself, President H. H. was on record telling people that Lungu has failed. Let's have an early election. So, if you Zambians demand that we call upon H to resign and go for an election, let's go that route. But it shouldn't come from us, it should come from you. And this is exactly what we are saying. So don't personalize these things and begin saying what well, for Corella, the program of action for Corella fight was in place. But the man came and fixed it. He said this, this can't work. We, 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 we. we who know better are now in situ. We who know better, UPN, are now in situ who sort out this problem. So now you're asking me, Edgar Lung, what would you have done? I'm no longer there, please, for goodness sake. But if I was, I would have continued that program of action which we are working on with the Ministry of Health, World Health Organization, and every other person. So, I'm on, sir, I'm on TV. Let's find time and chat. Because what you're asking is obviously known to everybody. They will keep reminding you of the past. The past will not help us. The past can only be a reference point. But if you choose not to work with the past, that's it. But I am telling you that the corridor was being fixed. But when the man came, he fixed the fight against Corella, and that's why we are now. So, what do you want me to do? I can only wait until I hear from you that this is how we are going to help government, the people, and so on. And as we go into the future, the people who helped bring UPND into power, who are very disappointed with how they've been betrayed by UPND, will tell us that how can we trust you that you won't betray us when you go to state house? Somebody was asking me that, and I was asking colleagues here, that let's take stock of what happens when people go to state house. Why do they change? HH has changed very quickly. He no longer picks your calls. He no longer talks to you. What guarantee is there when Saki goes to state house, he will pick our phone calls? Can we correct that so that as we take Saki to state house, we make sure he responds to our calls? Can we make sure that he remains the same friend of mine, Saki, when he's in state house? This is the challenge we face here, and the answer should come from you. Because a lot of you supported UPN, and I'm not saying you were wrong, but you didn't know that there is power in there. <laughs> that power depends on who is handling it. The power that gentleman is using, the same power I had. But did you see what you're seeing now? No, because I was well brought up. <laughs> respecting each other. And take for example, I was given an example. In church, I said, my good friend, GBM, is generous because he comes from the family. He grew up in a family where they taught him to love and to share, to be generous. And when he went to church, the church emphasized the need for generosity and love. And he grew up a loving person and a caring person. I referred to one of I said, he's a gentleman, perfect gentleman. And he grew up in a Christian family, they went to church and so on. So I was telling people, I said, let's bring our families to church so that we glorify God. And God also rewards us with the right values. And tomorrow somebody says, Lungu was a waste. Oh. Now, I am saying to you that my waste is far much better than what we have. <laughs> much better. You can talk about all these things. You can go into agriculture. You can go into everything, including exchange rates. You can go into price of meal. Yeah. Edgar stands head and shoulder above what you're experiencing now. I don't have to say it, but I'm not here to say that because it's like now I'm taking... Don't mention Edgar about this because Edgar will react. Now, <laughs> crimes. You can only cry in court and the fight against corruption. I, I, I think, again, you have to compare. These guys keep beating their drums and singing their song at the highest speech that they're doing better. Judge for yourselves. I have said in the past that the fight against corruption should not be for settling political scores or identifying which one you want to neutralize or even inhibit.
from the political landscape. That's not what you do. The people who are appearing before this court are all those who are political or politically connected, and we know that. And the idea is to emasculate them in terms of resources so that they're not able to say anything political or be able to even speak. Okay. But at the end of the day, Zambians cannot be cowed by the economic court. This court, whatever the intention, is not playing its intended objective, not meeting its intended objective at all. You cannot have a court which is told that you're not going to be paid in the judiciary, or you want to have an improved condition of service, or you want to get more money on an increase, because the money is in the hands of the former regime, who have got money in their houses. Yeah? And you are saying, unless you recover that money, you, the judiciary, will not improve your terms and conditions of service, including your pay rise will not be affected. You can't have that. So it simply means when I appear in court, they'll say, let's, let's nail him so that we can have money, so that we are able to improve our conditions of service and get cars and all those things. That's not what you do. You are politicizing the judiciary and corrupting them in the process. That's what happens. So I don't want to be involved in commenting on these things which are affecting me and my members of my family and friends because I'll be seen to be prejudicing the proceedings. Right? They have built houses now, they've got big cars, and uh, no one is talking about it. In two years, they've acquired all the houses or the plots which were vacant in Tendere here, Kalinga, Kablonga. They've demolished houses and they're building big mansions. And we all know the challenge is yours as media to bring out these things without fear or favor. But I know that you're also operating in a very difficult situation because even what I've said here, I know that probably social media might speak one or two witty statements I've made, leaving out the substance of what I've said. So good luck to the media. <laughs> and I think you all need us. We all need you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.